we ask to fix it, fix the problem, you know. Yeah. Cleaning is not the actual problem. No, no, no. You need to fix the engine working. Then we said, no, cleaning is the only uh, only thing. Right. And you can run the engine. And uh, this guy got really stressed uh-huh. because they were working in the marina with waves. They were trying to weld. Mm-hmm. They weld the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the welding was done. Welding was done by... Uh, so first day, the, the, he came clean. Next day, he cut it. Third day, the welding. So uh-huh. three days, I was there. So the welding guy did all, all the job. While welding, what happened? So the guy mechanic, he cleaned everything, right? So he emptied the tank from the diesel. So while emptying, there was a lot of spill. So he cleaned everything with the cloth and he put a lot of clothes over there. <laughs> and then the welding guy came and started welding. Mm-hmm. And then it catch fire. Oh, crazy. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is like of the course. fires. Of course, I mean, so I, I was having this this fire sure. extinguisher and the, uh, I was having a bucket because I was thinking like what all worst can yeah. happen. Then yeah, I had a bucket. Then, yeah. <laughs> then I just poured oh. the water. Yes. Uh, inside inside the engine bay. Yeah. Then he stopped. Then every time he start, uh, it's getting catching fire. Then mm-hmm. he soaked all the cloth with water, mm-hmm. and then we put it inside. And then he start welding. The welding is done. Welding guy did the job, and he said he I'm leaving. Then we started putting the, because all the fuel we, we stored in a can, okay. several cans, yeah. like 10 cans. We started filling the cans mm-hmm. uh, back yeah. again. Yeah. Take the cans and pour it again. Mm-hmm. So it's a 20 liter can, 20 liter. <laughs> we started filling it and it's leaking. Yeah, Welding guy left. Welding guy left. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to empty again, you know, yeah. empty again in the can. How do you do the empty? You have to go inside the bay and then open it. Catch there it. Is it's a, a small. There is a. There is a valve to open, well, but there is only a small bowl can be kept. Ah, so, so you take change a lot, huh? Take the bowl, <laughs> then uh, do it. You know, to okay. the bigger can, and then you move out. So then empty the can, and then we fill. <laughs> then, uh, then this guy came. He he welded again. Mm-hmm. Then he was sitting there with the light and watching, and then it started leaking at the top. So it was, before it was leaking the bottom, he did the work. Again, started leaking the top. Now the tank is full. But we are so. Day, huh? It's an another day. <laughs> and then yeah, and then we are so frustrated. Then this guy said, "I'm going to weld it anyway." No. Having with the, the fuel. With the fuel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like I I told like if it bursts, yeah, if it bursts, we all die. What do you want to do? Like, do no. Then he said, "I'm going to do it." And then he did it with the tank, full tank. Full tank. Oh, <laughs> Here it is leaking. <laughs> Here it is leaking. <laughs> I was like, you know, every second for me is like, the, the only the, if if it is just pain or thing. I I always you know when I go for trips something will happen. I always handle it. For me, Physical this is a bigger impact because yeah. it it is like putting me back uh, in time like four years. Yeah, exactly. Reversing me in time four like years, four years. Yeah. So. So anything happened to this, it's <laughs> like I'm, I'm putting myself yes. four years back. So so I don't know what to learn. Then then we filled it. Then it was not leaking. When it was not leaking, Marcus came and he was happy. Mm-hmm. In between, Marcus also left other day, one more day. Mm. No, no. Uh, so then he came. Then he asked, okay, everything is fine. He came. Uh, and then uh, we were uh, discussing all those things, okay, how to fix. And then we went. Uh, so then he said, okay, the weather is going to use to right? The weather is going to get bad. bad. Um, then he said, today is the best day to leave. Mm-hmm. We leave immediately. So it was night. So we decided to leave them. <laughs> so we left and it was exactly two hours. Again, engine stopped. Stop. Mm-hmm. Engine stopped. And it was again a bad weather. And it was again in midnight. <laughs> and, and again, you could not and go this back. So, so yeah, then we started putting sail, and this guy said he can't do anything, and he went to sleep. Mm-hmm. He tried to clean, and he went to sleep. Oh, it's a light. Mm. Uh, then, uh, then I was doing all the sailing part. You know, I was not sleeping. And he was sleeping. He was sleeping. <laughs> he, he, he was working in the bay, and then he got tired, and he said he got seasickness. And then I was doing that. Then I, I got tired a, a moment. Then I went to sleep. I was I was handling the sail and I was sleeping. <laughs> and the land was close by. You know, every time the wind is pushing me. 
I was trying to concentrate. It is never going. There is no wind. So and no slowly it is drifting. Autopilot. autopilot will not work when there is no power. There is no okay. power to stay. You know, mm-hmm. drive is not there. Then it cannot uh, do. Ah, okay. Then I woke up. I uh, Then I was searching for. I was shouting, Marcus, I can't see him. Mm-hmm. And I look back. Mm-hmm. Dinghy is not there. Outboard is not there. Disappear with the thing. What the hell? So so when I when I so then I jumped out and I was looking for him. I can't see him anywhere. Mm-hmm. I was alone inside the boat. Marcus is not there. Dinghy is not there. Outboard is not. Did there. you go outside? The yeah, yeah, outside. And I was searching. Truck. I was not. There. Then suddenly I heard like some sound, slapping sound. Mm-hmm. He he tied the boat to the dinghy, mm-hmm. and he was trying to mo- motor it from here from. <laughs> So he tried to <laughs> tow the, tow the boat tow the with the dinghy. Oh, well, he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. It's impossible. I was like, okay, first thing I got relaxed is like, okay, I didn't Marcus love because yeah. Marcus is here. He didn't leave me. <laughs> and like, first thing I, to- I thought is like, how could he le- How could he escape? Because mm. he can't escape, you know. It's land is so far. Yeah, yeah. With this small outboard, you can't reach there. Maybe he have to pedal and go through the rest, but it's pedaling is really hard. Yeah. And then uh, this, uh, so he was, he was, he was. Not, we both were not talking at that point. <laughs> and then we came. Then uh, he, we, when close to the marina, we were sailing. We were coming close, close. And then the engine started. Mm-hmm. It starts for and stop in ten minutes. So within ten minutes, we try to get slightly went inside yeah. and try to maneuver, and we went to a place. And dock, mm-hmm. and then it stopped again. Oh, so luckily, that time. that time we didn't call rescue. Yeah. And then he, this guy, he, he, I, I was out, and I was so. Uh, that's why that time I was calling Eugene, and I told like this guy is uh, leaving, right? Yeah. Uh, and we again we had a problem. I thought, okay, I don't want the boat. So I don't need the boat anymore. Oh, yeah, and I don't want to own the boat. So, yeah. so I co- called this guy, and I said. Uh, I don't want the boat. We can you can take the money because I paid ten thousand for you to drop me. Mm-hmm. You struggle so much. You take the ten thousand. Give me three to three fifty. Mm-hmm. I paid three twenty five. Give me three fifty. Mm-hmm. This guy said I cannot talk anything now. Mm-hmm. He took one of the key and he said if you want to discuss something, we discuss over phone. I I need to go see my girlfriend. My girlfriend is arguing. I need to go see, see him. Mm-hmm. Just an exchange. Yeah, and then he he just jumped out and he left. So I am out mm-hmm. again. In a boat without anyone okay. and str- uh, sitting there, and now this time there is no mechanic or anyone, and it is Sunday. Oh. It is Sunday, and the uh, not yeah, so the last Sunday was I was in uh, for Leba and then uh, uh, Gdansk, Gdansk, and now Gdansk. I'm in Leba. So then, uh, then I was so frustrated. Then I then I went around and I was asking. I went to this. One, there was one guy who was sitting in the boat and doing painting. Mm-hmm. So I went and asked him like. Uh, Do you speak English? And he said, "Yes, I speak English." He was sp- speaking good English. And then I asked him, "Like, I want to put the boat here and leave. I want to store the boat for winter. How much they charge?" Uh-huh. And he said, "It will charge around like two thousand euro." Uh, yeah, but I, I I thought, okay, it's it's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, like leave it for one year and then come back. Maybe then fix everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I need a I need to I I couldn't think. No, emotionally at that point I was sure, so broke. You want to. Yeah, leave it and yeah. go home. And 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 then if I want to go home, I I need to get home with this money which I have. By land. By land. Uh, so then uh, I was thinking so much, and then I, I and this guy came. He said, "Now go to the go to your boat, stay inside the boat, drink some water. I'll come back." That's what he said. He didn't say anything. Uh, it's not a whatever you're thinking now. It's not a good idea. Just go to the boat. I'll come back. Then he came. And he said, "I am a diesel mechanic. I own this boat. I bought. I built this boat by myself. Mm-hmm. It's a 44 feet steel boat. He built it by himself. Oh, 44 built, feet steel boat, huh? Yeah, yeah he built boat. from scratch by himself. Mm-hmm. Yes. And this then is he, 44, 41. Yeah. So then he said, uh, but he said this boat was bigger than. Uh, he he was amazed to see how this uh, this looks bigger than that one, <laughs> but it's actually this small one. Uh-huh. And then uh, this guy he uh, he said. Uh, Okay, I am a diesel mechanic. I will come see the problem. Then he came. He saw. He asked the engine is running. You know, when we came to the marina, stop right. Then I started. It is working. Mm-hmm. Then he opened it and he said, "Okay, I will see uh, things." And it it was it was everything was working fine. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and then he opened it, opened the fuel line, and he said, I will go try to fix this, to change the new fuel line, and if everything works fine, you can go back. Mm -hmm. You can go by yourself, why you are waiting for this guy? And he said, no, I, this is my first time handling this big ship, and I never handled it like this. And he said, put on the sail, don't think about anything, you can handle it, you can leave. That's what he was saying, like, I was like, okay, should I leave by myself? I'm thinking about it. Then I got a call from this guy. I know. He sent a mail. You know, he said he will deal with the email. Then he sent me these three options. You know, option one, option two, option three. Uh, then, uh, then we discussed and uh, decided like, okay, we'll go to option two. Then he says like, okay, you'll come and I'll fix the lines. He fixed it. Everything stayed okay. Then this guy, the Mark, he went to the went to his workshop, he cleaned the fuel and he came and cut the put it and it was working fine. Mm -hmm. We run the engine for like a, a, a full uh, four hours, it was fine. Mm -hmm. It's working perfectly all the time. And then this guy came and he was happy. Oh, it's uh, Ramesh, I'm sorry. And he was again uh, cheering and uh, he said, let's, let's pack now and move. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that was Monday. Monday evening, uh, like uh, we were ready to leave. It was around like uh, 8 o'clock, we left uh, Labour Port again. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, uh, again it again it broke. Again, again, yeah. Ah, yeah. So what happened, so we were coming, uh, we were uh, coming out and then we were sailing. It was running for 12 hours, perfectly. We were taking ship, he goes to sleep, I come back and... Uh, goes, until you cross the Rone? Uh, I cross uh, Rone, yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. cross uh, the island. You and took it, course, you, saw you it, sent, huh? you are going to take it by the starboard yeah. side. Did uh, you see the land? You saw it. Yeah, I saw the land. Like, it's big. Yeah. 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 It's, it's huge. It's <laughs> so huge, man. It's yeah, the airport, yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know it was so long. It's it Dan. belongs to Dan. Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every every island where till you cross Hamstad, it belongs to Denmark. Then uh, we came, sometimes we were hearing the waves of uh, Denmark, Denmark, <laughs> Denmark and some... Then it was like a big ferry line, mm -hmm. you know, big tankers were moving here. Mm -hmm. moving. I was checking it, those, I was checking... All yellow lines oh, like yeah. the ants, like <laughs> they are going... Biancas, then I click on another one and it shows big, big tanker. Big, everything is like... You a, can see by the color in the vessel finder. Uh, the color is... Uh, it says yellow color is a uh, uh, this thing, uh, a yeah. cup. What you call freight? Freight. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. a red is military. Uh, there uh, were many of those. Yeah. This magenta <laughs> is basically all magenta oh. or uh, sailing or yacht. Mm, yeah, those are. And, uh, I, and I think that's the only Bianca was the only. Bianca was the most. Only one, 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 one yeah. around the place. <laughs> when you are near Rone, there were few, and when you are crossing Denmark, there were few. But mm -hmm. uh, most of the time. Nothing so now, in that region. now we are in Atlantic, uh, sorry, the Baltic, and we just uh, start moving. Mm -hmm. We cross uh, Rome, yeah. and after crossing Rome, and then the weather, the soils started increasing slowly, mm -hmm. and it was traffic. And really? we, we put on the sails, you know. We we said okay, we don't stress the engine so much. Okay. We put on the sails. Uh -huh. And uh, now again, there. Uh, then we put on sails, and we were trying to fix. Uh, and there was a problem with the head sail. So I went. Uh, in, uh, the, I went to the bow to fix the head sail. He said, "Are you so crazy? Like it's a it's a big soil. Do you want to go fix it?" I said, "No, I can go fix it. I put I put a static line. Uh, you had a vest. I had a vest, and I had a line to protect myself. And I hooked the line. I was uh, tied the line." And I was putting some handles and beating, beating this uh, stuff mm -hmm. to get the head uh, headset properly. Mm -hmm. So I, I worked on this and I came to Engine Bay doing all these things. This guy was sitting here. Mm -hmm. When I came back, he said, we have a bad news. Uh, what was it? And again, we had the engine problem again. Oh, okay. Again, there is something stuck in the fuel line. Oh, so so again, <laughs> the problem. So, <laughs> so then... Uh, huh. Now we, we we cross Rone, so it's the next thing is like uh, Sweden, so we have to call, uh, so we try to sail as much as possible, we sail, when we are close to like 20 nautical miles, we called Swedish rescue, first thing they ask is like, ah, he said, uh, what is the problem, uh, do you have sails on, yes, the engine problem, then it's not emergency, <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> 
So do uh, do you have uh, insurance? No. <laughs> Are you a member of rescue team? No. <laughs> so you have to pay for the rescue. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much it is? It will be like damn expensive, like maybe ten thousand, fifteen thousand. Oh, no. So then it was like, okay, what we can do? Like we cannot call anyone. It's just and and they are not ready to come because it's so so swell mm -hmm. and it's dangerous for those guys to be there on the sea at that point mm -hmm. so they said okay we are sending to to a rescue boat uh, uh, by the time what we did is like uh, i registered in a uh, sweden rescue uh, SARS. SARS organization so now it's <laughs> yeah, free yeah. for me wow that is it, it takes <laughs> volunteer yeah yeah so i am a volunteer now I should also be part of this meeting and <laughs> go help people. Uh, I think I would love to do that. Uh, it's a, the team, but they were really professional. When they came, they just uh, tried to uh, calm us. And, compared to the Polish ones. Yeah, compared to the Polish, like, uh, the level is way higher. And then the only thing is in the the Polish one, they didn't ask anything. They came directly to help. But here it is like so much uh, questions, you know. Like are you, at initially I got frustrated saying that, why is it like it's in the emergency we are trying to reach them to rescue and they are asking so many questions and they, but they ask you if you can sail and you said yes right? yeah but you know sales they didn't have control the sales uh -huh. were pushing me because uh -huh. there were a lot of um, a lot of a big tanker big going tanker there, yeah. so the sales we put on the sales we can't take down the sales because we cannot go out yes and it is so much swell we will it's a, it's a dangerous. It is in the dark. Oh, if you go about it, and the sails, what happened? They were maneuvering because I I have put all the rudder to my port side, the starboard side, mm -hmm. and it's not holding me. It is taking me to the port. Mm -hmm. So it's keep moving, you know. Mm -hmm. to, so when I see a tanker, I keep seeing close by close. Yeah, but yeah. that tanker move faster, yeah. so I escape this tanker, <laughs> and then I go to another tanker. So I don't know in which tanker will hit me, and yeah. then I, so the moment it hit me, then it's that a, that's a must. It's so so it, it, even if it's going closer, it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So so um so then then this guy uh, this guy came. Then they said, okay, we are sending two boat, and uh, you can you will see it. Then we see you see on the rescues uh, stuff that uh, yes. Mm -hmm. 